you've definitely heard the word cryptocurrency before. Even if you've never touched it, names like Bitcoin, Ethereum, Solana, and Dogecoin have already shown up somewhere in your life in news headlines, memes, or even in conversations of people bragging about how much they made on crypto. All of them are digital currencies. They don't exist physically, no banknotes, no coins, only numbers inside a global network. People buy them for two reasons to invest and hopefully multiply their money, or to use them as real money to pay for things. And this is where crypto becomes exciting and terrifying. The world of crypto works like a roller coaster. One day a coin is worthless. The next day it explodes in value and creates millionaires overnight. Some wake up rich, others lose everything because they bought too late. That's why crypto scares people. It feels unpredictable and mysterious, especially when everyone throws around technical words like blockchain or mining, as if understanding them is obvious. So let's make it simple. What is cryptocurrency in one sentence? Cryptocurrency is digital money protected by cryptography money that lives on the internet. The word itself comes from crypto, cryptography, encryption, hidden security, currency money, no banks, no physical bills. You can't put Bitcoin in your pocket. You can't print more of it just because someone in the government decided so. Those shiny gold Bitcoin coins that you see on Google, they're just stock photos. Bitcoin exists only digitally in a global network that never sleeps. But here's where the real surprise hits. You can send crypto to anyone, anywhere in the world. No banks, no approvals, no forms. Just you, the blockchain, the recipient. Try doing an international bank transfer on a weekend. Crypto doesn't care if it's 3 p.m. or 3 a.m. It just works. But wait, isn't the money in your bank also digital? Yes, but the control is not yours. Traditional currencies, USD, EUR, etc., belong to governments. Banks decide whether your payment will go through. Your account can be frozen. Your transaction can be declined. Cryptocurrency flips the power structure. With crypto, you own your money. No bank, no middleman, no permission needed. So how did all this start? In 2009, something historic happened. A mysterious figure calling himself Satoshi Nakamoto created Bitcoin. No one knows who he is. Not the media, not the government, not the world. And that's the point. Bitcoin was created as a rebellion, as a digital alternative to money controlled by banks and governments. Satoshi's message was simple. People should exchange money directly, the same way they exchange cash but online. No more gatekeepers. What happened next? Crypto was supposed to be money, but people saw something else. This thing keeps growing in price. I can make money just by holding it. Someone bought Bitcoin at $10,000, sold it at $60,000, and changed their life forever. But volatility became the new reality. Today, coffee costs 0.001 BTC. Tomorrow, 0.002 BTC. People got scared of spending it. So cryptocurrency turned into something bigger. Not just money, an investment, a chance a new financial era. All right, so how does crypto actually work? Like what's going on under the hood? Because it's definitely not just internet magic money. The whole thing runs on a technology called blockchain. Think of it like this. Instead of a regular bank where all transaction information sits on one server controlled by one company, crypto uses a giant network of computers all over the world. They all work together to maintain one shared record book. That record book is the blockchain. Imagine a guy named Bob. Bob has a notebook. Every time someone sends crypto to someone else, Bob writes down who sent it, who received it, and how much. And here's the important part. Bob can't erase anything. He can't rewrite the past or fix a transaction. Once something is written, it's permanent. But then it gets even crazier. There isn't just one Bob. There are thousands of Bobs all over the world, thousands of computers all keeping identical copies of the same notebook. So, imagine Bob wakes up one day and thinks, huh, I'll just add an extra Bitcoin to my balance, no one will notice. But the moment he tries, his notebook no longer matches the copies that everyone else has. The network looks at Bob's notebook and goes, nice try Bob, sit down, and it rejects his version. That's why blockchain is secure. 
That's why you can't fake a transaction. Each page of the notebook is called a block. When the page is full of transaction records, it gets locked forever and attached to the previous page. Blockchain, blockchain. Pretty straightforward. So how does a crypto transaction actually work? Let's say you want to send your friend 0.01 BTC. Here's what happens. You create a transaction, basically, send this amount to that person. This command gets broadcast to thousands of computers in the network. These computers check. Do you actually have 0.01 BTC? Is the digital signature valid? Is everything correct? But there's one more step, confirmation. To confirm a block of transactions, someone has to solve a complicated cryptographic puzzle, basically a massive math problem that requires serious computing power. The people who do that are called miners. Who are miners? Miners use powerful computers, sometimes entire warehouses full of them, to solve those puzzles. This system is called proof of work. First miner who solves the puzzle gets rewarded with freshly created cryptocurrency. So in short, miners verify transactions. Miners get paid for doing it. That's mining. That's why you hear stories about people filling garages with GPUs. They're racing each other for that reward. But mining isn't the only way. Some cryptocurrencies don't use proof of work anymore. For example, Ethereum switched to proof of stake. Instead of solving puzzles, people lock up, stake their coins in the network. The more coins they stake, the higher their chance of being chosen to confirm the next block and earn rewards. Think of it like a crypto deposit. It requires way less energy. It's more eco-friendly. Quick recap. Blockchain is a global database protected by cryptography, impossible to fake or modify, not controlled by any single company or government. Because of that, crypto works without banks, without middlemen, without permission. You own your money. You control it. Now let's talk about the question everyone secretly cares about. Is crypto actually a good investment or just hype? Over the last few years, crypto became the symbol of easy money. People hear stories like, some guy bought Bitcoin when it was under $1,000 and now he's a millionaire. Sounds like a fairy tale, right? But it really happened. However, crypto is not a magic ATM. It can make you a lot of money, but it can also send your money straight into the void. Like any financial asset, crypto has risk and volatility. Prices can jump plus 200% and then crash 70% in just a couple of months. Why did crypto become popular as an investment? Originally, crypto was created to function as money, but people quickly realized something. Hey, this thing keeps going up in value. For example, if you bought Bitcoin back in 2016 for around $500 and sold it when it hit $60,000, your return would be over 13, 0%. You don't get that on the stock market. You definitely don't get that from a bank deposit. That's why crypto attracted newbie investors, traders, People looking for fast growth, but high returns come with high uncertainty. Volatility. Why the price jumps like crazy. Crypto prices are not controlled by governments or banks. They're controlled by pure supply and demand. And demand is controlled by one thing. People's emotions. Example. Breaking news. Bitcoin ETF approved. Price goes up. Breaking news. Crypto banned in major country. Price crashes. Elon Musk tweets anything market loses its mind. Real examples. After China banned crypto, Bitcoin dropped to $29,000. After news about a Bitcoin ETF, price exploded above $65,000. This doesn't behave like traditional money. Here, the crowd matters more than logic. Main reasons why crypto is unstable. Speculation people buy, not to use, but to sell higher. Media influence. A single headline moves billions. Regulation. Governments restricting or banning crypto. Tech news. Upgrades. Forks. New features. Whales. Huge holders can move the price by buying or selling. Sometimes crypto rises not because of real value, but because of hype and emotions. Can you get rich from it? Yes, there are success stories, but there are also tragic ones. Someone buys Bitcoin at $45,000.
gets scared, when it drops to $16,000, sells everything and locks in their loss. One year later, Bitcoin hit $70,000. They didn't lose money because of crypto. They lost because of panic. Crypto rewards the patient and punishes the emotional. The golden rule. Invest only what you're willing to lose. Crypto can make insane returns, but it can also drop hard. It's a market of opportunity, but also a market of risk. All right, let's move on. We already figured out what cryptocurrency is, how blockchain works, and why people treat crypto like an investment. Now it's time to decode the vocabulary, the words that constantly pop up in crypto videos, news headlines, podcasts, and conversations. Because honestly, crypto people talk in their own language. Let's make it simple. First term, Bitcoin. Bitcoin is the very first and the most famous cryptocurrency. People call it digital gold. And there's a reason. There will only ever be 21 million Bitcoins. That's it. No one, not a bank, not a government, can just print more coins because they feel like stimulating the economy. With Bitcoin, the supply is fixed. Limited supply creates scarcity. Scarcity creates value. That's why many investors don't trade Bitcoin every day. They buy it and hold it for years, treating it like a long-term store of value. Not to get rich tomorrow, but to protect their wealth over time. Next term, altcoins. Everything that is not Bitcoin is called an altcoin, short for alternative coin. These are cryptocurrencies built for different purposes. Ethereum, for example, is the base for smart contracts and NFTs. Solana focuses on high speed and low fees. Cardano efficiency and security. Tether, also known as USDT, is a stable coin, meaning it's pegged to the US dollar and stays stable in price. And then we have the meme coins. Dogecoin. Shiba Inu. Coins that started as jokes literally, yet their price sometimes skyrockets just because the internet decided to have fun. Not because of technology. Because of memes. Welcome to crypto. Next concept. Wallets. A crypto wallet doesn't store your coins. Your coins live on the blockchain. The wallet simply stores your keys, your access. There are two types. Hot wallets and cold wallets. A hot wallet is online, an app, an exchange, your phone, super convenient. But because it's online, it can be hacked. A cold wallet is offline a hardware device, like a USB stick. Maximum security. But if you lose it, well, the crypto is gone forever. Real story. A guy named James Howells accidentally threw away a hard drive. It had access to 8,000 bitcoins. He's been searching a landfill for years trying to find it. Next term, keys. Your wallet contains a public key and a private key. A public key is like your bank account number. You can safely share it so people can send you crypto. A private key is your password, your access, your ownership. Anyone who gets your private key can take your crypto instantly. Simple rule of crypto. Not your keys, not your crypto. Last term for this chapter, fork. A fork happens when people in a project disagree on how a cryptocurrency should evolve. The blockchain literally splits. One becomes two. That's how Bitcoin Cash appeared from Bitcoin. One group wanted faster transactions, the other didn't. Boom, two separate blockchains. So let's recap. Fast, Bitcoin, digital gold. Altcoins, every other crypto, including meme coins. Wallet tool to store access, not coins. Private key, guard it with your life. Fork one blockchain splitting into two. If you understand these terms, you're already ahead of 90% of beginners. The world is shifting toward a digital economy. And cryptocurrency isn't a temporary trend. It's a fundamental technology, just like the internet in the 90 seconds. Those who understand it now will own the valuable assets tomorrow. If you want a continuation, for example, how to choose a cryptocurrency to invest in, how to build your portfolio, how to analyze promising projects, just say it and I'll prepare the next episode.